Mother Nature never runs out of tricks. Just when you think you have seen every one of a weird little artworks you possibly can, along comes some unbelievably new phenomena that makes you go, no, I have seen it all, until you haven't again. So here's a list of such natural phenomena that may look like an apocalypse. The Penitent Ice Formation Penitentes or new penitentes are snow formations found at high altitudes. They take the form of elongated thin blades of hardened snow or ice closely spaced and pointing towards the general direction of the sun. The name comes from the resemblance of a field of penitentes to a crowd of kneeling people doing penance. The formation evokes the tall, pointed habits and hoods worn by brothers of religious orders in the processions of penance during Spanish Holy Week. Penitentes were first described in the literature by Darwin in 1839. On March 22, 1835, he had to squeeze his way through snow fields covered in penitentes near the Piocans Pass on the way from San Diego de Chile to the Argentinian city of Mendoza, and reported the local belief that they were formed by the strong winds of the Andes. In reality, wind has nothing to do with the penitentes. They form when the sun's rays turn snow directly into water vapor without melting it first, a process called sublimation. An initially smooth snow surface first develops depressions as some regions randomly sublimate faster than the others. The curved surfaces then concentrates in light and speeds up sublimation in the depressions, leaving the higher points behind as far as up towering spikes. At the micro scale, similar looking spikes help solar cell surfaces maximize their sunlight absorption. Recently, scientists have argued that the presence of carbon or any other impurities lead to some absorption of sunlight and the resultant occurrence of penitentes. If this theory is to be believed, then the glaciers could be saved from onslaught of global warming. There are counter arguments to this claim that if penitentes absorb more sunlight to the presence of carbon, they may also result in the destruction of the icebergs. Studies are being pursued in this field to discover the effect of global warming on the formation of penitentes. A lake of death located in Tanzania Lake Natron in Tanzania is one of the most serene lakes in Africa, but it's also the source of one of the most phantasmagorical photographs ever captured. Images that look as though living animals had instantly turned into stone. Along the shoreline of Lake Natron, altified corpses of a variety of birds and bats that had met their untimely demise after crashing into the deadly waters. No one knows for certain exactly how these animals die, but it appears that the extreme reflective nature of the lake surface confuses them, causing them to crash into the lake. The water has an extremely high soda and salt content. The soda and salt causes the craters to calcify, perfectly preserved as they dry. Other than serving as a breeding area for the endangered, lesser flamingo and as a home to certain kinds of algae and bacteria, Lake Natron is inhospitable to life. Blend red from the bacteria that live in it, the Salt Lake is steaming hot with temperatures that can reach up to 140 degrees Fahrenheit. The Door to Hell The Darvaza gas crater, also known as the Door to Hell or Gates of Hell, is a natural gas field collapsed into a cavern located in Darvaza, Turkmenistan. This is 230 meter wide. The Gates of Hell crater was created in 1971 when a Soviet drilling rig accidentally punched into a massive underground natural gas cavern, causing the ground to collapse and the entire drilling rig to fall in. Having punctured a pocket of gas, poisonous fumes began leaking at an alarming rate. To head off a potential environment catastrophe, the Soviets set the hole alight, figuring it would stop burning within a few weeks. Decades later, and the fiery pit is still going strong. The Soviet drilling wreck is believed to be still down there somewhere on the other side of the gates of hell. Still after 40 years, the site is still burning, attracting hundreds of tourists every year. Murmurations It is a behavior exhibited when a group of words called a flock are for raising or in flight. There are parallels with the shoaling behavior of fish, the swarming behavior of insects, the herd behavior of land animals. During the winter months, starlings are known for aggregating into huge flocks of hundreds of thousands of individuals, while rations, which when they take flight all together, render large displays of intriguing swirling patterns in the skies above observers.
microburst. When severe weather strikes, one of the most destructive things wind can do other than form a tornado is create what is known as a microburst. A microburst is a localized column of sinking air within a thunderstorm and is usually less than or equal to 2.5 miles in diameter. Microbursts can cause extensive damage to the surface and in some instances can be life-threatening. There are two primary steps of microburst. One, wet microburst and two, dry microburst. Wet microbursts are accompanied by significant precipitation and are common in the southeast during the summer months. In addition to impacts on the ground, microbursts can also create dangerous wind shears that may affect aircraft performance. Catatumbo Lightning Catatumbo Lightning is an atmospheric phenomenon in the country of Venezuela. It occurs over the mouth of the Catatumbo River where it empties into the Lake Maracaibo. It originates from a mass of storm clouds at a height of more than 1 km and occurs during 140 to 160 nights a year, 10 hours per day and up to 280 times per hour. It occurs over and around Lake Maracaibo, typically over the bulk area formed where the Catatumbo River flows into the lake. Catatumbo lightning changes its frequency throughout the year, and it is different from year to year. For example, it sees from January to March 2010, apparently due to drought, temporarily raising fears that it might have been extinguished permanently. The storms and associated lightning are likely the result of the winds blowing across the Maracaibo Lake and surrounding swampy plains. The heat and moisture collected across the plains create electrical charges and as the air masses are destabilized by the mountain ridges result in thunderstorm activity. The phenomenon is characterized by almost continuous lightning mostly within the clouds which is produced in a large vertical development of clouds. The lightning produces a great quantity of ozone, though its instability makes it dubious that it has any effect on the ozonosphere. Sea smoke Sea smoke, frost smoke or steam fog is fog which is formed when very cold air moves over warmer water. It forms when a light wind of very cold air mixes with a shallow layer of saturated warm air immediately above the warmer water. Warmer air is cooled beyond the dew point and can no longer hold as much water vapor, so the excess condenses out. This effect is similar to the steam produced over a hot bath or a hot drink or even an exercising person. Spider Web Tree The unprecedented flooding in Pakistan in the latter half of 2010 disrupted the lives of 20 million people, but it also affected the country's arachnid population. With more than a fifth of the country submerged, millions of spiders climbed into the trees to escape the rising floodwaters. The water took so long to recede, the trees became covered in a cocoon of spiderwebs. The result is an eerie alien panorama with any vegetation covered in a thick mass of webbing. While eyewitnesses named spiders as a main culprit behind the cocoon trees, others believed that various insects or possibly mud larvae could have contributed to the swirling webs. Regardless of what species created the peculiar cocoons, pictures of them travels quickly over the internet with people calling the phenomenon incredible, bizarre and even terrifying. UFO Cloud Lenticular clouds have been said to be mistaken for UFOs, as many of these clouds have the shape of a flying saucer with a characteristic lens or smooth saucer-like shape. Because lenticular clouds generally do not form over a low-lying or flat terrain, many people have never seen one before and don't know that they can exist. These stationary clouds that form mostly in the troposphere, typically in perpendicular alignment to the wind direction. They are often comparable in appearance to a lens or saucer. So, how are they formed? As air travels along the surface of the Earth, obstructions are often encountered. These include both natural features of the earth such as mountains or hills and artificial structures such as buildings and other structures. These disrupt the flow of air into eddies or areas of turbulence influenced by these obstructions. If you watched this far, I believe you must have enjoyed watching this video. So if you could leave a like and subscribe to this channel, that would help this channel to a great extent. I'll see you all in the next video. Have a great day.